All right, welcome. So uh, today we'll be talking about how to create artifacts for iLeap and A-Leap. Um, I believe it's, it's fairly easy. There's some prerequisites. You need to have a, a working understanding of Python 3, nothing super advanced. I don't consider myself a super advanced user, um, but the software does what's intended to do, right? And I believe in a, in a way that's pretty manageable. Thanks to Yogesh, he's helped me a lot, and I'll put his his uh, web page and link in a second. Um, it's been way improved, um, easier to maintain, and I, if you're not familiar with iLeap or A-Leap, it's uh, a, a collection of Python scripts that let you uh, parse data, extract interesting artifacts from Androids and iOS devices. All right. So before we start discussing how to make an artifact, let's quickly talk about how is the, pro, the script structured. So if um, you're not familiar, you just need to go to uh, the GitHub page, which is here. I'll put all the link, I'll show it in a second. And we'll talk about how they're structured, right? So if you see here and uh, on the screen, you'll see the two main entry points for the program. If you used it, you're familiar with them. It's iLeap.py, which is uh, the command line or terminal entry point. No graphical user interface. For the GUI, you need to do the one that's underneath it which will generate a, a GUI, right? And let me demonstrate the GUI fairly quickly here. This is my IDE. So I have everything here. I just hit go run in my IDE. And here's your GUI, right? Where you select your extraction, where the output is going to go, and you let it, let it rip. All right, so let's close that. Entry points. To make an artifact, you don't need to mess with those. But I just want to give you a little background on that. Um, all right. And of course, this is assuming you did all the requirements, all the um, installs per the uh, the README that you find on the page. You see here, you know, pip install the requirements, and you're good to run the program. Right now, to uh, to actually make an artifact, uh, there's a couple of steps. I'm gonna verbally explain it real quickly, and then I'm gonna type a little bit, and then we'll go at it. Uh, the first is. Um, iLeap and A-Leap, what they actually do is they provide you a framework. So you can uh, um, handle tar, SIPs, or file systems, right? You don't have to code that. It's already coded by the software. So you don't have to worry about how I'm going to handle a SIP, how I'm going to handle a tar file. iLeap and A-Leap does it for you. Then you extract or you tell iLeap, look, this is what I'm looking for. And you do a kind of a grep type of search for the artifact of interest that you need. And you pull it out or iLeap pulls it out for you. Then you can uh, apply a, a script to that artifact, or I'm sorry, to that uh, data source that will generate that artifact. And then iLeap take that, that data and puts it in a nice report. So if I'm going to boil it down, iLeap and iLeap is a way of opening these files that you're interested in and then making them look really nice in a nice report for you to review. That's all there is to it, right? How it's going to process a, a, a SQLite database, that's up to the coder to add that part, and I'll show you that. If you're going to do a protobuf, we have, um, and you can see here on the screen here on the left, you see black, proto, black box protobuf. So we have certain tools included, but it's up to the developer, you, a uh, developer of the artifact, to kind of leverage them. Um, I'm going to jump up real quick and say one little detail here. There's many artifacts. Look at this. If you can see here on the left how you know, many artifacts from many, many different data sources from, you know, like I said, protobufs, plists, bplists, uh, SQLite databases, um, flat files, you name it. We have some, some here. So you can always work off one of these, kind of go through them, see if the artifact is what you need, make a copy, and then edit it as you need it. So um, you got everything you need already kind of to give you a heads up. Okay, so let's get back to it. So, like I said, um, you do a grep search for where the artifact is, where the SQL database is in your in your data, and then you call a script that will run over it. Which that that link is going to happen in this file here called iLab Artifacts, All right? And this is the uh, I would say is the traffic cop of the program, All right? I'm going to explain this is this uh, this imports here in a second. If you look here at this uh, this what dictionary here, Python dictionary, it's called to search, and this is the key part here. 
every single artifact will be named here. Okay, for example, I have here one for uh, all my power log artifacts are here under power log. Okay, and if you see here at the end of that uh, key value pair here, this is the uh, the value here, you'll see the grep search, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this particular SQLite database. Okay? Every artifact will have, let me see if I can find one. Here we go. Here's a plist, for example, right? This work is up to you, right? You need to beforehand identify where's the, uh, the file that you need, what's the uh, structure, and then test. Make sure that, that you can, can consistently find it, right? And I have a way of doing that my own way, and I will discuss that in another video. In the future but here's where you write so let's say we found you know a path that we're interested we just put a comma and then start writing um, the path here so the obvious question well what's the first thing I write here what is this key here well this key here is how the artifact you're gonna be working on is named the script that will parse the the data source that's the name of it and that shows here on the artifacts Pane here on the left, that's the name. So, for example, the first one, let me see, so you see AC, ACCS here for accounts, here it is, right? So, your script that will parse your artifact, the name of it will come here, right? Second is the category that will show on the report. And I should have made a report beforehand and I didn't, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get that, we'll get to it. Um, every artifact can be categorized. For example, these two artifacts here they're under the category accounts. So you will have accounts and then underneath each artifact. Okay, uh, and the name of, of that artifact the, and the report name, I'll show you where to put that in a little bit later. And then the third part here of this, of these lines here is the grep search, right? Where, where you're gonna find it. Okay, so we got, you put those in. Oh, so a, a quick note here. This is like the default run when you use Ali as when you download it. I also have one here that's longer, and it's longer because I have each and every artifact on its own, right? And, and the, the reason I put that in is because maybe you want to really narrow down and you want to look for just one power log artifact. Instead of going here and running power log, power log sorry, all, which has all the power log artifacts kind of condensed, you might want to just get the time zone. So what you do is you take this entry here, and you make a two-search uh, dictionary with only one <laughs> or two or three artifacts that you're interested in. And again, uh, if you're not familiar with Python, I understand this might be a little bit hard to grasp, um, but that's part of the prerequisite. Have a working knowledge of Python. So you comment this big list, comment the big list on the bottom, just, let, let's just leave this dictionary by its own there, and it will only parse one artifact, and that's it. Right? And actually, that's what we'll do for our test run of the artifact we're going to build. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. This dictionary is a traffic cop. This dictionary keeps track of all the things that are gonna be run on that extraction. And then the, the, the thing is, well, this first key here is the, the, uh, the value. I'm sorry, this key here is the name of the artifact that is gonna be applied to what's found here. Um, we need to make sure that it points to the right direction. So you need to do an, an import here. So from scripts.artifacts, that's the directory, scripts here on the left, dot artifacts, it's gonna look for the name of the artifact. Let's pick a CSS right here. And the entry point inside that artifact is gonna be get underscore a CSS. And that's a convention that Yogesh and myself agreed, and it's, it's I think he, he came up with the idea, it's genius. So let's go into that artifact so you can look at it. See the entry point is get a CSS. Does that make sense? So when the, when the program or the script runs, it will go and say, okay, I'm going to run, um, I'm going to jump to ACSS. I'm going to run ACSS, right? I'm going to go into the tar or directory, look for this database. If I find it, I want to then process it, right? Go to, it's, it's already included, right? Um, you know, I already did this import, and this is my entry point where I need to go. And it goes right here and starts doing the processing, okay? And let's continue uh, with this same example. It's a short one. It's a pretty good one. So 
when it gets to this point and calls this script, this is this is the heart of the matter. This is the stuff you're going to be coding yourself, okay? And I'm going to explain this line here, right? iLib will give you under file fa files found whatever was responsive to your grab search, okay, which is right here, or Unix search, whatever you want to call it. Um, in this case, it's going to give you all the instances of account three dot SQLite. And this variable here, files found, is a list. It could be a list of just one entry. It could be a list of many entries. And the reason for that is you could do a search. Let me go back here. You can do a search instead of a particular file. You can do a search of, like here, like any files that end with en and whatever it is. So it could be more than one file. You can maybe pull out, like in this case here, I'm pulling out all the mobile installation dot logs, right? And there's more than one. See the asterisk at the end? Um, actually, there's two of them. So you know it pulls them both. So your files found variable might have more than one uh, entry there. And it's the path to where that data is. So you take that into account. In this case, and I kind of made it really explicit for you to guide, for you to make sense. It's only one. To make it even more explicit, I'm just pulling out the first a member or item of that list, and I, I, you know, I name it file found because it's just one. But again, this is this is up to you how you want to do it. Um, the next thing that is provided to the script is a report folder, so it's gonna be the working space for the script and the secret variable. But you don't have to worry about any of that. But at least this one. All right. So here's the now is the easy part. This is pretty much boilerplate. I use it on all my scripts, right? I take file found or I could take file founds the serial the the, you know, the first entry of that and I'm gonna execute a query on it right and then I'm gonna take the values of that query and do something with them and again you need to, I'm not gonna explain SQL like to you or SQL to you this is something that you should know these lines here these and actually this line line I'm gonna mark in 31 line 34 35 36 37 38 are the heart of the reporting. This is all that you need to know for reporting. And it's I think it's fantastic. And I'm gonna add here these two are used for creating um, tab separated values of your data for ingestion in other tools, right? It's not a lot. Look at it. It's just honestly like the, the heart of it, the heart of the matter is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. And these nine, li nine lines will do everything for you, okay? All right, so let's gonna go through them. So we do we did our uh, our query, right? If we have let's imagine we have less than an entry, right? it's zero, right? It will tell you there's no data available, right? Because you couldn't find anything, okay? But let's assume that we do. So we start a list that will receive the output from that query for you to report on. So we're going to go through all the for the query, and I'm going to pull out whatever rows I need from this query. You see it here? And you're going to append it to this list. That's it. Let's say you're doing chats. Well, I want for a database that's for chats. Then I will do an example now. I'm, I just want row 1, which is the stats, row 2, which is the name, row 3, which is whatever it is. And it goes to the database, and you make it in that list. All right? So you have the data that you need. The next step here is how are we going to call this report, right? And this one particular instance is account data. So I'm going to put it in this line under account data, right? right. If I want to um, put more details um, to that artifact, in this case, I name it differently. This is the name that goes in the category. And it's kind of hard because I haven't showed you that. I should have. <laughs> Remember, I mentioned that um, here ACS is under accounts. So accounts, same thing with its other artifact. They're both under accounts. The individualized name is here. It's going to be here, account data. So your report is going to show accounts and underneath for this particular artifact, accounts data. You can name it something else. You can name it whatever, and it's going to be accounts and then whatever you named it. But remember, that category account is defined here in the iLab artifacts part here on the on this part okay so this is how you're gonna name it 
right? This is just to, you put it there, you don't mess with the report.ascript, script, don't mess with that. This is the headers, right? So the headers, because again, iLeap and aLeap, they work in this kind of like spreadsheet kind of format, looking format. It makes absolute sense, it's pretty obvious that the rows you're extracting need to have the same amount of headers for it so they can match them together. If you don't match correctly, there might be an issue at report generation time, and it will let you know. So we have here uh, six um, fields that I'm interested in, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six headers for it, right? Then you feed to the reporting module, you feed the headers, you feed it the data, and you feed it the data, where was the data found, here in file found. So it can be part of the report, and you send it, and it does the report for you, and honestly, you're done. Um, down here, you name the, the tab, uh, I mean not tab, sorry, uh, yeah, tab, tab separated value, how you want to name it, and it will do it for you. And it's pretty neat because now you have that same data, both I leap as the interface, like in our HTML report, and you have it as a, um, as a uh, tab separated value, so you can export it. And that's it, we're done. Sounds like a lot, sounds hard, it is not. So let's, let's do one, let's do one. So let's start, let's use this one as, uh, as our building block. So what we're gonna do is, let's just duplicate it. And I'm gonna name it, um, is it power log? I think it's power log. Power log volume, I think. I have it already. Um, no, let's name it, let's name it some, um, let's name it somewhere else, let's see. Let me, let me, let me get a name for, for one, just give me one second. All right, All right, so, so what I did was I renamed one of my artifacts, so we can start kind of from scratch and use that one as an example. Okay, so like I said, we're going to name this power log volume, because this is the one that we'll be doing, okay? And you're going to save it in the location that's for the artifacts, again, which is the, um, the scripts directory, the artifacts directory. That's where you're going to save it, right? So, like I, like I mentioned, let me close this out. Okay. Um, I, did, I duplicated this one because this artifact, the accounts one, is a SQLite artifact and I'm interested in a SQLite artifact, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is delete this query because I'm going to put in a new query. Now, the query I'm going to use is from Sarah Edwards from one of her Apollo modules that deals with the power log volume, and it's fantastic. And I'm doing that just as a shortcut um, for the example. Um, actually, I think I have it here already linked. I did not, but it's, 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 oh, here it is, yes it is, okay, here we go. So here's, here's the query that we're looking for. Obviously this part, the part about identifying your data source, what the query should be and all that, that's your research. You, you do that before you get to iLeap or aLeap, right? You, do your, you, you identify your data, are you going to parse it, and then that knowledge, you put it in iLeap, so iLeap can automate it for you. So in this case, we're taking uh, Edward's knowledge, which is pretty awesome. And I'm going to take this query. I'm just going to copy it here. And I'm just going to put it here on my on the query part here. Oh, this kind of looks a little bit ugly. Let's just fix it a little bit. I mean, not super fix it, but just a little bit. Um, take into account that iLeap allows you to um, work with different iOS version. So you can have an artifact that like in this case, like in Sarah's, it applies to iOS 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But sometimes you might have that same artifact that applies in a certain way, the query at one query for 9, 10, and in another query for 11, 12, and 13, even though it's the same database. But it the schema changes from version to version. And iLeap can manage that for you. And uh, I will discuss that in a future video because this is already too <laughs> as long as this. But future video, short video, we'll discuss how to do that. In this case, we're not worried about it. We're gonna go with nine to thirteen, and that should be fine. So here you go. Here you got your query. The next step is I want you to change the entry points. So get 
power power log volume oops not yeah volume I had it right all right can't type today all right, power log volume and of course you can name this whatever you want I like I really liked to name it the same thing as the script so I don't get confused so power log volume okay and then down here we need to count how many rows I'm interested in so I'm interested in this row one well actually zero one two and three so that's not too bad right yes three so I'm gonna go zero one three which is actually four but you know what I mean and we're gonna call this volume volume okay and then that's the name of the artifact, like when the report opens, and then the name under the category, we're gonna call it volume two, volume as well. To make it more descriptive, volume. I can't write today. I don't know what's going. On. All right. Actually, let's put it here power log because we want the report to say it. So when people look at the report, know it's volume from power log. But the category, the subcategory volume is just fine. And we're gonna name, you know, describe the fields. So let's call this one time stamp. At this point, I'm just going to go quickly, so it's not going to look super pretty, just, just, just to make sure that we get to where we need to be. And then I'm going to call this muted, and we're going to call this table ID. Right. Be prepared for this to have a hiccup, because again, I'm doing this on the fly, um, live. Well, it's a recording, but, you know, live, so zero, one. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, making sure, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, wait, 0, 1, 2, 3, there we go, and 0, 1, 2, 3, and that's, and that's that, and then for the top separated value, let's name it uh, power volume, and if we find nothing, there no power log volume data available. Okay, so we got that, okay? The artifact is done. Now we need to tell um, iLeap or Aleep, they work the same way, how to find it. And this part, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I already did it in a sense, right? So let's go here to, let me just search it so I don't waste time, volume, here it is. So this is what you would need to run that thing. So I'm just gonna copy it and put it in my one run dictionary because I'm, I don't want to I don't want to run everything there we go right see that so we got power log volume let's confirm it's named the same power log volume right right power log is the category perfect we have the grep search for the database that we're looking for right so let's comment the things to the bottom comment the things to the top so this is the only line that's gonna be executed and don't forget you need to do the imports right so you have to go up and make sure you add it here which I already did but I'm gonna show you where it's at there we go so I'm gonna highlight this line All right so you're gonna write from scripts artifacts power log volume that's what the script is and the entry point get power log volume recap it you see it here the entry point get underscore power log volume hopefully I'm not my eyes is, my eyes not glo glossing over something I'm missing when you all when your head screaming you know well, we'll find out pretty quickly right I think we're set so let's let's run it let's use Josh Hickman Josh Hickman's um, I think it's a yeah um, data source um, he has excellent Uh, iOS images, public iOS images for research and, and the like, for teaching, whatever you want. So I'm going to use that one. Hit open. My output folder, I'm going to put it on one of my external on my external drive here. Uh, I have some of this a leap now. Right, that's fine. We'll put it here. If there's an issue, it will tell you. <laughs> so we're going to find out. <laughs> Let's hit it. All right, it's running. And now what it's doing is it's looking for where the data is, right? It's going to do that grep search. So it'll, it'll take a, a some seconds to kind of start ingesting the tar file in memory. 
um, which is better than original. I did it every time I had to call the tar file and open it every single time. Now it goes up to memory, and then you do the, the looking up in memory, but it takes a little bit to, it's not that much. A few seconds to kind of pull it all up and do its thing. So let's just wait. In the meantime, let me explain something about here. This little bar here is a progress bar. So as it's, as it's hitting the artifacts, it, it goes through. Again, it turned red immediately because it's done. It's just one artifact. Um, so you see here the power log artifact is executing, was completed, and how long it took. Okay, and where the report is. So let's hit OK. And if this worked correctly, you see here power log, and you see volume, and if you hit it, there it is. Okay, whatever you pulled. I believe it's fairly easy. I believe it's pretty straightforward. If you go onto your report, so let's go to that report location, and uh, output, as you can see here, let me hide this. Um, iLib creates its own report directory properly named iLib. This is alib then alib with a timestamp, which I, I really like. And if you go there and you look at the underscore TSV exports directory, here is the data in a tab separated format. And if you're wondering why tab separated as opposed to comma delimited or whatever, um, I like tab because if you're dealing with chats, there might be the errant comma or the errant quotation marks that will mess your imports. So it's less likely that somebody will, like a tab in your data, will mess up with the generation of your export. And you know, you can take this and use it for whatever tool that you need. And you're like, that's not a tab, there's tabs. It, they're tab, don't worry about it. <laughs> My ID shows them like that. All right. And that's pretty much it. Um, let me go back to a report. And uh, again, power log category, volume is the that name that shows on the screen for the artifact. And you see here power log volume. And I'm gonna again I wanna re I wanna show you where's that at in the script, right? If you go to iLab, I closed it, eh, it don't matter. If you go to iLab uh, where is it? Artifacts. Your, your dictionary will have the name of the artifact, will have the category, which is this key here within the, the first value, and your grep search at the end. Okay? All right? And like I mentioned um, in this example, you see it here is even better. Power log volume is the name of the script, and power log the name of the category. You see it here, power log name of the category. If you go to your artifact, it should be in the artifacts folder, obviously. Um, Power log volume. Mm -hmm. There, it, there, it is. Here is the subcategory name, volume. Okay, fairly easy. Power log volume. The report um, part is goes here. So here we go. So you write what you write here in this artifact HTML report a function is what populates here on your report, right? You see here the path of where the stuff was located in your data? That comes from down here, from the report dot write artifact data table stuff under here, under file found. That's where your path comes from. Okay? And your data list, that's where your data, and the data headers, that's the data headers. And again, I know I repeated everything I just said one more time, but I'll make sure that it makes sense. And your artifact is done. Um, I bet there's there might be some bunch of questions. Feel free to reach out to me um, on my Twitter. Let me put it here. And uh, you know, I will definitely revise this this video as folks tell me, you know, I don't get what you're saying. And you know, I might redo it a couple of times till it actually makes a little bit more sense. So that's my Twitter and uh, my email. So you can send me questions to me. If something's not working, let me know. I have iLeap here already at the bottom, so you can get the software. What am I missing? GitHub, email, and Twitter. Oh, and my blog, if you're interested. Well, most likely you've already seen it before, but there it is. So you can reach me that way, right? Thank you so much.